WTF is Web3, where we untangle the uncertainties of Web3 technologies. Be sure to check out the show notes for more information, giveaways, and ways to stay in touch. You're also going to want to make sure that you're subscribed to our podcast, our YouTube channel, and our private group so you don't miss out on exclusive content, freebies, and much more. Uh, just like that last conversation we had, and kind of like the conversations we've been having, let's let's stay real high level with this. Like moon is a big symbolism in the crypto world. We were just talking about the moon. So let's do the 239,000 foot view. Okay. So we, we did web three overall. Let's, let's zoom in and focus on one of the topics that we were chatting about last time. I think we should look into some metaverse. I think you okay. have a little bit more experience on this. You're a little bit more uh, exposed to it. Yeah, what do you, you want to know? You've been living in the metaverse for, I don't know, what, 20 years now? Came came to the right guy. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I we, I, I believe in the uh, the, the whole, uh, you know, Elon Musk pop, popularized the, why can't I think of the word? Uh, simulation theory. Man, I was uh, like, I know it starts with an S. I was like, subjects as uh, substitution simulation theory. So yeah, I mean, we, we, we this might be the matrix. I don't know if you're you're really it might be a, a really convincing, well written NPC. I don't know, or figment of my imagination. But yeah, the the metaverse is something that I have been um, playing around with for a while, and I think it is very apropos to discuss metaverse because I think that all of these uh, topics that we discussed in the first episode, um, especially, are going to have substantial roles in the different metaverses that are out there. What's, what's, is it, is it metaverse I? I'm, I'm pretty sure it's metaverses, but it sounds it's more sophisticated if I say metaverse I to pluralize metaverse. But um, yeah, there's a number of uh, projects out there. Um, I'm, 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 I'm probably too deep to shepherd this conversation. So maybe you, you tell me what broad stuff, cause I could go, I could go specific. I could go niche. I could even give you my opinions and speculations on certain projects. No, again, well, let's, let's take super that. high level with this very save that for another episode. Yeah. We'll dive deeper as we go a little further, but like, this is, this is the matrix. We're in the matrix, man. And, and you know what I hate about the matrix? The smell. The smell. I hate your stink. Mm. That, that was my agent Smith. Agent Smith. That's a good one. Yeah. 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 All right. So metaverse, uh, uh, let me tell you what I kind of think the metaverse is. And then and I'll tell you how wrong you are. And then I'll ask you some questions to fill in that knowledge gap that I clearly will have. Fair enough. So the metaverse to me isn't necessarily Web3. I think it's kind of Web3 adjacent. It will utilize a lot of the Web3 things, some of the stuff that we were talking about in our last discussion. But the metaverse really is this immersive environment not that different from these like free roaming video game worlds that have existed for quite some time, but allows you to just be immersed in it and experience a lot of the things you would experience in real life, but in this digital native world. I mean, that, that's basically the metaverse. What am I missing? No, I, I would say that's, that's very accurate. I, I would say that uh, metaverse is definitely a, an aspect of a, a part of Web3. It's one of the components of Web3. Is um, it? I, I do. Yeah, I, I think it's part of the, the entire Im immersion. As I mentioned, um, as I kind of like uh, alluded to in, in the last episode, I, I was kind of looking at them. I mean, the parallels of, you know, Web 1, 2 and 3 kind of coincide very much if you if you want to look at dimensions and the third dimension or Web 3.0, not that they were named that with any correlation in mind, but I think it's uh, uh, somewhat appropriate if we don't go and if we don't think about it too much, that it, it's adding depth. So just like adding, you know, going from one dimension to two dimension adds depth and in, in ability and not literally depth, but another dimension. Uh, then th the third dimension is when we, you know, have a significant amount of depth. Uh, the web three is going to be more immersive experiences that have metaverse involved as part of it, but it's also going to be the, intelligence of things in the real world digital assets currencies uh the immerse the the immersion of ar and vr possibilities and ar and vr are also going to be coinciding with the metaverse experiences 
as will be cryptocurrencies and DAOs and NFTs, but there will be metaverses where maybe there isn't going to be an AR or VR or cryptocurrency or DAO or NFT engagement. Most of them do have plans to incorporate just about all of those things, um, but they're not completely dependent upon each other, but we will see a lot of intertwining, especially the, the larger projects, I think the biggest and most successful metaverse projects will be incorporating all of those because the, a true metaverse, I mean, if you think about a, a great analogy or a great example, I should say, is the movie Ready Player One based on the book. Yeah. But like but, that That's the metaverse. I feel like yeah. that's the model that so many people, when they think metaverse, they think Ready Player One or maybe Free Guy, which was the, the newer movie with Ryan Reynolds. But Ready Player One encap encapsulates just this imagery that people uh, just come up with when you think of metaverse, at least I do. Yes. So there's, there's, I mean, a lot of the, the parallels that I've, I see in a lot of the metaverse projects that I'm aware of, or uh, the ones that I'm particularly interested in do have a lot of parallels where there will be, it's not just going to be a game. So people like, they'll be like, well, what's the difference between a metaverse and Grand Theft Auto? Well, and actually, it's not super accurate because you could argue that there are games within Grand Theft Auto. There are different versions of the game, multiplayer, yes. there's even little arcades, different missions. So it does start getting in there. But I think where it really becomes the metaverse is where what you do within that platform, portal, dimension, metaverse, that universe, that little whatever, the game. I don't want to call it a game because that seems so limiting, but where it also comes and starts it can influence your external life by making money within the metaverse. Not to say that you have to be able to make money or conduct commerce in, uh, you know, more than just buying more maps like in Call of Duty, but you can actually earn and make money. I think that will be, while it, it isn't necessary to be described as a metaverse, I think that will be a major component and where people are actually going to be able to have jobs. And this is already happening. Like in, in a lot of the metaverses that are already out and functioning, a lot of them very quickly have some way for you to make money, whether you're designing NFTs, you could be making wearables for the avatars, designing houses, um, buying and trading land, and you're getting real money out of there. Um, and it's there's services, there's jobs. I've, I've seen job postings for different metaverses where they pay a certain amount an hour for you to be a little avatar hanging out in you know, a, a certain building for a business asking people or uh, answering people's questions and helping them learn how to play the game and navigate and all sorts of stuff like that. It's, it's already okay. there. People just aren't aware of it. Yeah. And I, all that makes a lot of sense. And I could totally see all of the, these web three components becoming uh, elements that are within this greater metaverse universe. Uh, but you did bring up the point, Grand Theft Auto, very yeah. much like what we think of as a metaverse. Mm -hmm. I, I can kind of make the argument that there's been a lot of these video game existing universes that were not that dissimilar to metaverse. So I guess a, a good question here is how important is this AR and VR-ness to a metaverse? Do you have to be like really feel like you're in it or can it just be something that you experience over your phone or, or through a laptop or even on a television? I think that as uh, metaverses come into maturity, uh, the AR and VR uh, abilities are going to be uh, more expected. It's just like, you know, if we went back to Web 1.0, the expectations of a website were very, I mean, you, you could basically have a, a little bit more work than, you know, just a basic blog. And now comment sections and logins and all this other stuff starts becoming what's expected and necessary um, to really keep people engaging with your website through, you know, the, the additions in web 2.0 and now eventually web 3.0, there's just going to be to, to like keep up with the Joneses. I think that is going to be at least an option. You might not have to engage specifically through AR and VR. You could still do desktop engagement. Um, and I know, uh, some of the projects they're going, they intend to have apps where you can engage in that could be like an AR type of thing where you're engaging, you're in the metaverse, specifically Earth 2, where you could be sitting at uh, an airport, you, you're, you're, you know, you got a layover at an airport, you're bored, and you want to see what is there because Earth 2 is a one to one scale of the Earth, 
It's a very bold metaverse project, and that will allow you to engage instead of just flying around the 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 board or the world or whatever. You can actually see what happens to be right there. So while you're, like I said, bored, see what this looks like. See what someone built here at this airport while you're waiting for your flight, or while you're waiting for you know your wife to select some shoes at the mall or whatever. Um, the AR will be a the AR and the VR will be at first there'll be differentiators and eventually I think they're going to be basically requirements where you won't just be as successful as the other projects by not having that depth to the uh, experience. So you just mentioned two terms there, which um, are abbreviations, not acronyms. AR and VR are very common terms used in technology. Um, can you just define those real quick for anyone that may not be too familiar? So uh, VR and most people know virtual reality. And then AR would be augmented reality and augmented reality would be uh, a lot of people are probably familiar with the a few years ago, Pokemon Go was an app that was huge for the, the AR uh, type of experience and really got the name out there. And you would be able to use your phone to look around and parks and people were running into traffic and doing all this crazy stuff, chasing Pokemon that you can only see through the app, the Pokemon go app. And it's, it's still out there. I just don't hear as many people running into traffic for it, but you're basically running around looking for these Pokemon in the real world. And you're basically, it, it'd be just like using your, your phone's camera. So you're able to see the building that's in there in real life, but then there's a superimposed, Pokemon showing there and you're able to capture it. I didn't really play the game. I was actually afraid to get addicted to it because I, I had didn't chance get addicted to it. One of our very good friends, he was, he was playing it pretty seriously. So I, I stayed what? away from it. But yeah, yeah. The Pokemon Go, I, that's a really good, a good, good reference point, I think, for a lot of people because it did sort of permeate through a lot of modern normal society. Mm -hmm. And yes, we, we did have many friends that were involved. I love that time because I saw just so many children and, and kids outside actually running around exploring things. It, it helped integrate, integrate, <laughs> integrate technology with activity, which, which was nice for a change. Yeah. But okay, so, so that's a good, good definition of AR. And then another one was Google Glass. I think a lot of people remember that like brief, I don't know, a little bit of foray into wearables that Google tried to dip their toes into. Didn't last very long, but I believe this year, uh, Meta, Facebook, or, you know, we'll get into to them and mm -hmm. where they sort of stand in this ecosystem. But I believe they are coming out with a, an AR augmented reality glasses sometime this year or next year. I think in, yeah. in partnership with Ray-Ban, I, I may be mistaken. Yeah, I feel like uh, Google was, um, it was, it was a bit early for it. I think they, I forget the what the whole all the details were, but it was years ago, and it was like, wow, this is already out. I remember it was one of those things where it was like, wow, we're already there, like we're we're already in the future. Um, and they were doing like a limited run, like they didn't do like you couldn't just buy them. I think there was like a limit on how many they made, or you had to like, yeah, there's a program you had to apply for or something. It wasn't just something you can go and buy. But I think that's a way for them to like start beta testing and figuring out what the problems are, or how people are going to use this, kind of get some be behavioral data um, on there. But imagine, I mean, it, it's inevitable. There, if anybody thinks that that stuff's not happening just because oh, no. it, it, it didn't. It definitely is. Yeah. Um, and then you think about more utilitarian purposes. You're walking and anything that you'd have to engage your phone for, you can now have your smart glasses and eventually probably contact lenses or you know your Neuralink that's going to superimpose um, you know, your, your contact list or whatever you want to scroll through. And you could just use audio or maybe some hand gestures or something like that. But you could say, all right, pull up contacts, call John, FaceTime John or something like that. And you're going to be able to see this superimposed while also seeing the real world. So you're walking around hands free, Robocop. holding. Yeah, RoboCop. But that's, it's more than just a game is what I'm getting to. And it's going to be driving directions. Instead of you looking down for your GPS, your car is going to have a heads up display. Your Google glasses are going to have a heads up display that illuminates the uh, road in front of you. So you're not having to look down, but, and your car is going to be driving itself by then. So, you know, yeah, yeah. All, all that's super interesting. And there's definitely tons of applications for that augmented reality to integrate, man, I keep having stuff. Integrate, integrate, yes. integrate 
this uh, this metaverse universe of all this rich data and layer that on top of real world so you can get the benefits of both. Um, I mentioned that Meta, I believe, is coming out with some augmented reality glasses. I think Microsoft actually is as well. And, and you know, maybe Amazon. These are some of the big players in this. And that's sort of, I guess, the next question for you here. The Metaverse. Facebook has rebranded the Meta. And I mentioned we'll, we'll dive into that a little bit, but we don't have to get into the specifics of the company just yet. But Facebook is Meta. Mm -hmm. Is that the metaverse? How, how does this work as far as the metaverse? Is there a metaverse or are there you know, multiple metaverse? Is this sort of like a VHS Betamax situation? Where are we going from here? Yeah, it, it is. Um, there are right now uh, for the foreseeable future, there will be multiple metaverse projects. Um, I would I, I wouldn't want to make it. Uh, I wouldn't want to make a comparison to websites, but because um, there's not going to be that many, uh, at least not initially, but there are dozens probably of metaverse projects that are in the works and uh, also already live. There's some that you can already go on. There's some that I'm already participating in and I've, I've played around on um, and they're, they're a lot of fun. They're at different stages. Are they all going to be overtaken by one in the future? I don't think so because there's multiple different social media. Pro like it, nobody has a monopoly on really anything that I can think of. So it's it's very similar to competitive companies, and they're going to be, you know, trying to innovate and differentiate and bring you know some other reason to attract an audience. Um, but yeah, they, to answer your question, there there are multiple, and as far as I can see without some uh, event or reason that I, that I can't fathom right now, there's probably going to be multiple um, for the foreseeable future. I think that makes a lot of sense. And you brought up a good point there of these different social networks, right? This is not that dissimilar where you have a network, sort of the value of this universe relies on other people being in it so you can interact with them. Mm -hmm. And as people coagulate towards one Cut that, cut that, cut that, cut that, cut that. As, as people, no, keep, keep. as people sort of come together towards one of these platforms, they're just going to spend more time there by default. Yeah. You, you can't really jump around all these. You're going to invest a lot of time in it, invest a lot of resources. Like you said, there's these different tasks you do in them and you can't really replicate that. Or maybe you can, I don't know. We'll find out, but it makes sense that you're going to have a lot of discovery early on a lot of early adopters, a lot of, um, you know, the early incumbents in these places, and it'll sort of shake out from there. So I guess that makes sense. So there's not one is, is really the big takeaway. So there's a bunch of these different companies sort of forming these. You mentioned that you're involved in some of them. Can you just like go through some of the big projects out there and maybe for full disclosure, sort of say like your level of involvement in them? Because I know you've you've dove into these pretty deep and even have done some tutorial videos. So yes. Let yes. everybody know. Um, some of the big ones, and, and uh, I don't want to go too deep into any of them, but I'll, I'll mention some of the big ones that are worth you know putting on your radar, maybe checking out. Um, one is one that's very well known is Decentraland, um, and Decentraland is a pretty interesting project. Again, this is one that is already it's it's already been around for years. The plots of land already going for thousands of dollars. I think the last time I checked, the cheapest like square of land, which it would be the equivalent of, I believe, 30 by 30 meters, but don't quote me on that, I, I think is going for, it's all priced in Ethereum right now, um, but I think it would be something around $14,000. So for you to buy, buy the smallest parcel of land, it's over ten thousand dollars right now, and in the market might may fluctuate, but from what I've seen, right. it's it's only gone up. And then there's larger pieces. It, you're all, it's just like real real estate where your proximity to certain attractions and roads and all sorts of other stuff also has you know, a factor in the value. There are games with indie central land. A lot of them aren't super advanced. The graphics aren't. Uh, amazing. But another reason that a lot of people know about Decentraland is they also have their own cryptocurrency. And I think it's a very smart way to not only raise funds, but it seems like it's going to be inevitable 
that cryptocurrencies are going to play a lot a large part in our future so of course when we're talking about digital virtual currency why wouldn't we also plan to incorporate that in any metaverse that's going to be coming out facebook already has uh they've already mentioned years ago that they had intentions to launch their own cryptocurrency i believe it was going Libra? to be a stable coin yeah. yeah um so i'd imagine that's probably going to play a role in theirs as well i haven't seen really much on on meta facebook's project but that's another one that is probably the most well known because you know they changed their name which was a great way to get the word out there it was their their parent company changed their name correct yeah so it's it's the overall overarching company it's a bit like google became alphabet and like alphabet, yeah. products underneath there so you have uh, facebook as the platform is still facebook instagram still instagram but meta is just the overall parent company Another another big one is Sandbox. Uh, that one also has a cryptocurrency that's already out that you're able to uh, buy, sell, and trade on a lot of different cryptocurrency exchanges. That's a way for you to invest if maybe you don't want to, um, you know, try to spend thousands and thousands of dollars in Decentraland, and you want to spend some money in Sandbox to buy, you know, property there, and you want to, but you do want to kind of hedge your bets and kind of get get in on all of them. This is an investment advice, but another alternative is you can invest in the cryptocurrency, uh, the cryptocurrencies associated with these uh, uh, projects, um, and then there's also ancillary businesses and projects that are going to be needed for cryptocurrency we can or for uh, metaverses and we can get into those in in another episode if you want because i know that gets kind of deep um another one and, and i'll probably make this one my last one that i mentioned is earth 2 i mentioned it before that one is very different in that it is a one-to-one -one scale replica of the earth so sandbox and decentraland don't at least right now they don't have that ambition they have a limited number of tiles that are out and people are buying selling and trading them but it's not a a one-to-one -one scale replica of the entire earth now earth 2 isn't out like you can go and play into central and actually during the super bowl two I, earths two, two earths. earths two earths um I, I, we should have we should have people like try to comment where our little uh references <laughs> are where, where that came from if if, if you uh, know where that what he's referring to not a direct quote but a reference an allusion to add it in the comments ma massive room. yeah add it to the comments we'll, we'll get with something um but decentraland i was there they had a promotion miller light had a promotion in decentraland travis barker's already done a, a concert in Decentraland. JP COVID. Morgan, we were talking about banks. They set up a beautiful branch in Decentraland. Uh, Atari's there. Um, I got a free t-shirt from Miller Lite uh, for the Super Bowl. They're running a, a promotion. A, a wait, virtual, wait, a, a virtual t-shirt. Yeah, an NFT okay. right. wearable for my avatar in Decentraland. It was free, uh, just promotion. T-shirt. It was limited production, so it'll be maybe worth something. I don't know, but it was free and it, it was... An engaging experience they had like a little bar very basic little features and you had to run around and complete certain tasks or like 17 little things for you to engage in so you had to like search around the bar and see what you could click on that would interact and play a jukebox and, and all these little things and then once you get that done you get the free t-shirt cool so that that was the central land or, or that was that was the central land earth two so you were talking about earth two before oh. i rudely interrupted you with two earths with two earths um yes uh, earth 2 is not yet at the they're currently in phase 2 of uh yeah. they don't have a cap on the phases but we know that phase 3 is when they're going to be um actually having it will have the ability to visit the earth so now i've got land in all these different countries i bought them all over the place i bought you know famous landmarks and places that are are memorable to me where i got engaged things like that and i just bought all this stuff very very heavy speculation but what's interesting about earth 2 is their intent for uh so many mul so many multiples of econ so many mul so many economies i should say multiples of economies doesn't make sense so many different economies um and plans to make it so that people uh, all of them have this, uh, have the intent for you to be able to make money if you choose to, or you could just play the game. 
but they have multiple layers of ways that your properties are generating resources. Uh, there's a land income tax that incentivizes people who buy early. You get, you, you they're know, adding the, the best things of real life taxes. Well, well no, actually, the visits. The, no, the land income tax, it's confusing, but you actually, that's where you're making money. So I buy into a country before you do. When you go to buy into that country, there's a small amount of when you buy that from Earth 2. Not on the secondary market. So secondary market is when you're buying it privately. But when you buy it from Earth 2, there's a fraction of that that gets spread out to people who already own a piece. So it's like a, a dividend that's paid. It's it's small amount. It's like it's like a penny, two pennies, four pennies here and there. And it's 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 a little bit, but it's real money that's coming out that you can pull out. Like I've made, I'm not gonna talk about how much money I made, but I made an embarrassingly large amount of money from Earth 2 already. And then there's resources that are developed depending upon where you're land. And you can sell the land. You could use the resources to build things. Um, you can design buildings, sell those blueprints. People buy the blueprints from you. Um, there's going to be, there's NFTs. They've already, they've done their second round of uh, an egg hunt where you're rewarded with an NFT. The first round, I was fortunate enough to get one of, I think, uh, less than 25 NFT eggs. So that's going to have a value to it. Um, you're going to be able to build properties, sell. It's it's very in depth. It's exhausting to really go over, and that that could be multi. That would be yeah. episodes in depth. I have an entire YouTube channel and podcast just on Earth Two, so I'm not going to get into those depths. But that project, the main takeaway, uh, the differentiator of that that I think makes it unique compared to all the other metaverses that I'm aware of, is the one to one scale replica of the Earth. Because that's going to allow you, like I said, to engage in, you're at the Statue of Liberty. What's here? Someone bought this island in, in Earth 2. What'd they build here? And uh, that makes it, uh, that makes, gives it unique abilities that no other metaverses have. For instance, geolocation for ads. Based on where I'm walking around in the real world and I've got the Earth 2 app in my pocket, now they're going to know where I go, where to advertise for me, like even where I live, I mean, it's going to get creepy, but from a business standpoint, that's some pretty interesting data that you'll be able to have that again, the other metaverse is just, they'll be able to advertise and monetize and do all that stuff, but they won't be able to do any kind of geolocation correlation. Got it. Okay. So earth two is like the feudal system of, of the group. That's like a, a Google earth that you can sort of zoom in and you can get a, a little portion of the land for all, the entire earth. Yeah, but where they are right now is what it sounds like. They're not quite in that full immersive avatar exploring the land yet. It's like the early days. No, they're of, they're of staking your claim on some property and then getting there to that level. They're yeah, they're just the not pro there yet. The project itself uh, launched November of 2020. So okay. as of as of this recording, it's just over a year old. So it's still in its infancy. You can imagine the size of a project where you're doing a one-to-one -one scale replica of the earth. Now they're not replicating the man-made structures, buildings, roads, things like that. Oh, okay. So, so it's, ju it's just the geography, just top topography. Just, yeah. And can, can you buy the ocean? Yeah, you could buy the ocean. You can terraform. So you can buy some oh, ocean, turn it into land. Space. You could buy some land, buy desert, turn it into forest and okay. all, um, right. all sorts of stuff. There's, there's right. resources, oil, uh, gold, wood, water, there's uh, limestone, all sorts of stuff that you'll be able to use to either sell, build. Um, you can, people can lease your land and then it kind of like, it reminds me of a uh, old country from, uh, for, or no, uh, what was it? No there, will oh, there will be blood. <laughs> there will be blood where he's like getting leases for land. And he's like, listen, you don't have the money to extract the oil. Let me lease your land. I'll track the oil. And then as an owner in Earth 2, you get a percentage of whatever resources they extract. You also get paid based on if someone, if you own like downtown Manhattan and someone wants to put up ads there, you will get a share of the ad revenue that Earth 2 is collecting for those ads being there. So there's there's a lot, a lot of ways to monetize it. There will be in all of these metaverse, in many of these metaverses, people will be making full-time income. There will be people who just like cryptocurrencies produce millionaires and billionaires, that will be something that we're going to start seeing over the next five years coming from these metaverse projects.
Okay. And so that's, that's Earth 2. Was Daniel Day Lewis in No Country for Old Men? You just got those two titles. No, confused. Daniel Day Lewis was There Will Be Blood. Such yeah, I know movie. that, but I didn't know if that's that's how you got your little wires crossed there. If I had a straw, if you had a milkshake, and I had a milkshake, and I had a straw that reached over to your milkshake, and that's I drink bad. it up, that's I drink bad. your milkshake. Man. I'm going to bludgeon you to death in a bowling alley in my basement. There Will Be Blood or Gangs of New York? I'm Gangs of New York. Oh, man. The butcher. Yeah, the butcher. I, I would I would have to say butcher. Gangs of New, New York. Yeah, there was yeah. I feel like there was more depth to that character. Yeah. But but he's a he's a method actor. Like he's he's one of those guys who just like until the movie, until they they they're done, he's in that I couldn't imagine working with somebody like that. Oh no, that's, yeah. It's gotta be he's just a maniac, an absolute maniac. Imagine working right. with him on like three movies, but he's a different dude in each movie. So you never know who Daniel Day Lewis is. He, uh, well, he was Lincoln. It's, How do you it's Lincoln? That was a good movie, too. That was really good. He was Lincoln. Okay, so that's Earth 2. And just for full disclosure, like you're, like you said, you're pretty involved in that. So if it sounded like a commercial, it's, it's yeah, those, he may have been kind of commercializing it. Yeah. I, and but, actually, if, if you are interested in Earth 2, I do have a just, referral code. Okay. Since I was an early promoter of it, you get 7.5% off uh mana or uh or decentralized okay. and, and sandbox i've got no coupon code for you all right so I, I, want circle, I want to i want to i want to circle back to some of the other ones that you gave a little more of a cursory overview on you, you talked about decentralizing which is a big one you didn't mention roblox is it roblox yeah roblox um that is i don't think it's going to be it definitely has a huge base i think that yeah don't don't talk about the future of it like just just tell me what it is it's it's um I think Roblox and Minecraft are great um, case studies to to look at, or, or they they really there's an entire generation of kids, and it's probably a generation um, I'd say the the younger millennials, and then younger than that, the was that Gen Z after after the millennials, I forget how it goes. Gen Z, Gen Z, those those kids and, and young adults and, and people creeping into their thirties grew up playing these games, Minecraft and, and Roblox, very comparable. The graphics aren't super, you know, crisp, but it's not hyper realistic or anything, but it shows that there is a, an, a massive attraction to allowing people to go in change the land, build stuff, build castles, use their imagination and, just express their creativity in designing a little world that they're spending hours. Like these kids would not leave the screen. A lot of them um, if they weren't forced to by their parents. So there's definitely an attraction to do this stuff. So you can only imagine that when you add more depth, more realism to it. Um, that's another thing that differentiates earth two from a lot of these projects is the the graphics are going to be much more advanced, but even going back to Roblox and Minecraft, because to me they're 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 very similar, and there's probably some people who are, are gonna you know eviscerate me for for saying that, and they're like, oh, it's completely different. They're very similar. The concept is people want to have a, a platform where you can play games. Um, a lot of these metaverses are are hosting different types of games within them, or you could just run around and it's like playing Sims, but with the ability to like build a castle. Sims. And the Sims. Sims. And I mean, Sims, it started with Sim City. You remember Sim City? Sim City and the Sims. But yeah, Sim City. Um, Sim City 2000. Roller like Coaster it. Tycoon. Roller Coaster Tycoon. And, and, and that stuff, you didn't even have the freedom to like fully design it. You could buy certain stuff and kind of design the roller coaster how you wanted it and put the tracks here and there. But like you could build this stuff from scratch. Like I'm going to make the block and I'm going to decide it's going to be a green block. And then with those blocks, I'm going to make a big green castle. And then within that castle, I'm going to make a roller coaster that goes into a statue of a dragon's throat. Like the, if you go on YouTube and you, and you check out some of the videos, some of the stuff people have built in Minecraft in Roblox, it's amazing. <sighs> it's, it's absolutely amazing. And these are young kids who are doing it. So naturally they're, they're, they're going to be the designers of these metaverses. And a lot of the metaverses also have that, for the people, by the people type of thing. It's not going to be salary well, developers. Well, well, and so so that's sort of my next question with this, because we just mentioned that 
you have all these different meta meta vies that that exist right now. I like that, they're, huh? all, they're all sort of fragmented, but a big aspect, and I bring up that it's the primary aspect of Web three, and this is I think where you and I kind of disagree, is this decentralized component mm -hmm. where you have the ability for individuals to take control. And that's really what makes that next leap out of web two. You no longer have these like walled gardens or these big organizations are control. But with the metaverse, that's exactly what we have. We have these big companies starting their own universes and they essentially control the keys to it. I know that was a huge pushback that a lot of people had with Facebook rebranding as metaverse, that now you would have Facebook in control of the metaverse, something that a lot of people in this space were just bent over thinking that Mark Zuckerberg could be calling the shots in this. So it's, it's a concern that I think I have, but also why I'm not exactly sure if I would consider this a web three application. Now, like you mentioned, a lot of these things you could bring in and they're, they're going to be used by the metaverse. You're going to have digital native everything, basically, which lends itself to all these tools. Like we're going to get into NFTs and talk a little bit more about them as we, we go forward in our conversations, get a little more into cryptocurrencies. But like it's not built on the blockchain. We talked a little bit about the blockchain last time. That's not like what the metaverse is built on. There's no smart contracts. And you have some of these other companies like really competing like big like well-known conglomerates microsoft microsoft just bought um what was it activision blizzard yes. ostensibly to to bolster this sort of this world of theirs but they have really in-depth business tools which make a lot of sense utilizing a metaverse but again they're they're a huge company um epic games so you're talking about games fortnite mm -hmm. fortnite's basically a metaverse and they're I, I was reading some reports that they're looking to, to really jump in and get some more funding and grow a metaverse universe around Fortnite. Um, and then a lot of like, maybe like device companies could be jumping on board. Like Apple, Apple's really well, really, really well positioned for this with their ecosystem. But again, like that's a huge pushback for their closed ecosystem for their, like their apps mm -hmm. that you don't have this ability to, to have control. And so, I don't know what's your what's your take on that, and how how is it going to actually have this this like freedom for the people by the people like you just I, mentioned? Um, I would say that um, there there are projects that their intent uh, their expressed intent is to go the for the people by the people decentralized route. However, in the beginning of anything that wants to be decentralized, you you need it to be built and that's going to take you know the more complex it is the longer it's going to take um you know for instance a lot of people think they associate every cryptocurrency uh with decentralization and that's not true the ethereum the second largest cryptocurrency is not decentralized they've got a ceo that Whoa. guy has control they've done edits to the blockchain they've, they've gone back on certain things it's there is someone who has control they are also not infinitely finite at Vitalik's discretion. They can create more Ethereum, whereas Bitcoin is decentralized in that Satoshi Nakamoto is not in control of anything. He's a, is a, he's a ghost. He disappeared. Actually, turns out he's, he's down here in, in Miami. He's, he's a Caucasian guy. Um, and we can get into that in another. What does that matter? Episode. Casey? Because Satoshi Nakamoto, they, everyone thought he was Japanese. It's a Japanese name, but his, his name is not be, Satoshi Nakamoto. That was one of his, uh, not a gnome de plume. What would that be? A pseudonym. A pseudonym. But there, once these projects are at the level where they can, you know, walk for themselves, like I know Earth 2, that's that's their intent. They, they've already put in, um, and sand, Sandbox, I believe, and I think Decentraland, and they are implementing blockchain. Like the, the properties that you buy, they all have a unique identifier which correlates with uh, a blockchain registry there are smart contract uh, uh uh foundations that would dictate how much you get with the uh the land income tax where you get that little dividend when people buy in um and all sorts of other things and there's stuff that like i can't even see 
they have confirmed that they are going to have their own cryptocurrency. They also have a uh, this thing called it's called Essence. And the way I would describe it is it's not a currency. It's going to behave very much like a currency, but it's basically um, like a, a substitution for work or energy. So you can you can harness and collect essence. And then when you have resources, you use essence to turn these resources into something else. You have a bunch of wood. Now I'm going to use the wood that I have in the essence and it'll be consumed and I'll turn it into a log cabin. Um, so, and then they also have e-dollars. They will have uh, at least a tethered cryptocurrency that will be a, a stable coin. And it looks like it's going to be one-to-one -one with the U.S. dollar and possibly even another currency that might fluctuate. I don't know if that'd be towards their advantage or not, but I think that right now it's just so early that a lot of these projects aren't even, they're, they're still arguably in their infancy, but I do see it being a necessity because of the, the reasons that you express. Everyone has uh, the concerns with uh, Metaverse. As those projects start being exposed for nef nefarious things or things that maybe not nefarious, just things that make people feel uncomfortable, there will be that that desire for something that is decentralized. Same thing with with social media. We are now seeing a lot of social media projects that are coming out with like their the banner, you know, the, the drum they're beating is we're decentralized. We're decentralized. There's no censors censorship. Uh, we're not going to ugh, censorship. That was a weird word to bite my tongue on. Um, we're not going to collect your data, like all this stuff. As it becomes more of a problem, not, not something that we're like, oh, it's going to be creepy in 10 years when they're able to do this. It's like, no, they've been doing this for 20 years. Now well, it's in the front of our minds. They, I, I don't really know if they're saying they're not decentralized. Uh, oh, some some of the... Um, or some they're of not the centralized. Ones. Sorry, if they're, if they're not centralized. Some of the new ones, uh, there's there's one I mentioned to you the other day, BBS. Their whole thing is there. There's no, um, there's no censorship. There, it's it's going to be. They build the platform and they put it out there, and you can make your own platform. And in, it's like a it's like a Reddit with cryptocurrency and blockchain and NFTs all woven in on it. Not going to get into that. That'll be another episode. But their whole thing is we're decentralized. I think a lot of these, especially with all the political stuff and all the COVID stuff with false information and fact checkers oh. and all that. If people want something that's just decentralized, they want to, people are, you know, the Joe Rogan thing where he's like Joe Rogan's position. You mentioned somebody else where they basically have a, a similar quote where it's, you know, to combat misinformation, you need more information, not to start censoring people because it becomes a slippery slope when you, who decides, you know? Okay. Yeah. And so I was referring to David Sachs and if any yes. of you guys are not familiar with the all in podcast, fabulous podcast, and they actually talk about, Meta quite a bit, and, and some of the concerns that we bring up. Um, you should have Dave know. come by, drop him, <laughs> drop him, a, drop him, a, 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 a hit him up on Gitter. Yeah, yeah, you know he's a Miami <laughs> guy. Yeah. So I, I understand your your points. I disagree that a lot of these these uh, these organizations have the intention to release these projects to the masses and give up their control over it. Um, but you know that that's for another conversation. And I, I just a point to I, I'm not sure Vitalik is the CEO of Ethereum. Like I know there's like a whole bunch of like separate organizations there. There's like the Ethereum Foundation, um, and then ETH is the actual coin. So you yes. know we'll get into all this the separation between the coins and the blockchain and stuff like that. So there is some separation. But yes, they did have an ICO where Bitcoin did not have an ICO, which is also a big argument on why the, the ETH could be a security. But we'll get into that stuff later. But so just going back to these, the MetaVi as like a, a place that we can use a lot of these, these Web3 components, um, I'd like to just chat a little bit about some of the cool things that like we could think of that, that can be kind of cool <laughs> for the metaverse. So off the top of my head, you've mentioned NFTs sort of coming in. That makes a lot of sense because if you have a digital first universe, we mentioned this briefly on what an NFT is. An NFT is uh, a way to show ownership of one thing. It works really good with digitally native items because you can link that. Mm -hmm. You don't have to create this like real world separation. So this is why we were saying these digital photos work really good because you can link this digitally native artifact 
to this blockchain log in this ledger and you can prove ownership. Once you like take something off chain or, or you do some real life project or product that's a piece of art, very difficult to prove that is this digital token. So mm -hmm. in this, this metaverse world, you now can have everything have this digital unique identifier and it can be sold, it can be traded, but it can be proved that it's owned. So it gives this option for ownership, for really like show off, right? To flex. Yeah. That, that's half of what people own in real life. That That's the big thing now. But, um, and, and as I mentioned in the last uh, episode, and, and I'll, I'll try to be brief so you can finish your thought, but I, I, I correlate NFTs as the digital representation or authentication of assets and cryptocurrency is the digitization of money and NFTs have a strong correlation to, and like uh, last episode, we couldn't come up with a better term. I, I don't recall an asset, something, it might not be a, a, an expensive painting. It might just be my family photo album. It, you know, but it's something that says this was created by this person. There's this many of them. This is the legit one. This is number 45 of a hundred, whatever it is. That's the authenticator. That's the, the credibility in, in the, 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 the title, the, the serial number. The that, title, you know, that, title, that title makes sense. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's essentially a title for ownership for everything. And so with that, it's not limited to just, um, you know, an artifact, you're calling it an asset. I'll call it kind of an artifact, like a physical, tangible. In real world, it would be physical and tangible. In mm -hmm. this digital world, obviously it's not, but it's still represented as a digital tangible item. Yeah. But the cool thing, and we'll get into all this when we talk about NFTs, but NFT is really a way to record anything digitally native. I mean, you can then associate with any real world, but that includes sounds, videos, um, yeah. movie clips, um, art, series of. And, and not even that, but if this is a virtually immersive world, now you, this can be 3D renderings. So yes. it can almost be like memories of this virtual world that is an NFT. Yes. So there's some uh, really cool applications of this decentralized tool, right? There's there's so much, and, and we'll go into more depth in, in an NFT specific uh, podcast because I, I don't want to do it a disservice, but... If you're a music artist, it, you know, everyone's looking at it from a graphic standpoint. Okay, we could, you know, digitize stuff and, and flip these JPEGs and everything else or stuff that's really impressive, like the Beeple stuff or, or whatever else. But if you're a music artist, you can now use, you can now create your songs and your albums. You can make them NFTs and then your, your fans can support you by buying them. And if you get, you know, your song gets picked up for a music uh, to, to be in a movie, and there's royalties being paid because of your success from the fans who supported you by buying the NFTs. You could have smart contracts and stipulations in there that give them royalties from their share of that ownership by you being able to like fractionalize the the, the rights of that 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 uh that you know work of the whether it's an album or a song or however you want to do it. You can make uh, castles for the metaverse and you can sell those blueprints as nfts you can make vehicles in the metaverse and sell them you could do a limited production run you could do statues like anything that you think of in the normal world that would be a thing whether it's a book the title to your house all of that stuff can now have uh and it, it gives it an intrinsic value by being limited or, or somehow authenticated as opposed to just being able to copy and paste everything you do. I build, I spend hours and hours and days and days and months and weeks building this great castle or, or replicating a Frank Lloyd Wright house or something like that. And I, and I make a 3d rendering of it that you can put in Decentraland. If you could just copy and paste that, why would I spend all that time? But if I can make it so it's that one thing, or I make 50 of them, and there's only going to be 50 created by me. And I'm, you know, uh, maybe the Toll Brothers are eventually going to get into making houses in. The so th there's that, that's actually a thing that I've I've been hearing a lot about is is the developers sort of branching into these. It makes these sense. They just mind. all they have to do is yeah. dust off these these drawings that they already have, and they don't even need to worry about having an engineer now go through it. They can get well, way more grandiose with it if they wanted. 
So what's interesting about this, this lends itself very much to our conversation we had about skeuomorphic items with new technologies. Yes. And essentially that's what's going on here. We have this new realm that we're replicating things that had to be done a certain way. Like a building needed a blueprint and it needed a foundation and needed to look a certain way because that's what physics required. Mm -hmm. And so now we're going to take this and transpose it into this metaverse world, which is, you know, makes sense. It it's, helps us become accustomed to this new universe. So it feels natural, but there's no limitation on what we know is reality to have to be replicated in this new universe. And mm -hmm. I think that's a really neat thing. Because you mentioned some stuff that like we're already using, but you can have like some really amazing inventions here. Like it could just be things that just defy the mind. Like you could be thinking of um, things, things from dreams or movies or, or yeah. uh, you don't have terror. the, the same yeah. physics that you have to worry about. You don't have like you yeah. can make you can make a. A, a tower completely made out of glass and you don't See, but have you're to trying to describe about... things because like we're describing it based on what we know like you and, and know we're going to be so limited you know who's there there's uh i was talking to this guy who's a programmer and he had this uh um project that he was involved in where they taught very young children i think it started like somewhere in the single digits they taught them basic ways to start coding and as they learned it they got more and more um, you know, in depth with the coding, I'm not sh sure which languages, but the stuff that he, he's like he, the, the things that kids think of because they don't have these limitations that we have and they're growing up with computers. So as these kids are growing up, as I mentioned before, the Roblox kids, the Minecraft kids, this is all going to be second nature and they're going to be so unchained from a creative standpoint they're going to be able to come up with stuff that we've never think thought of and what's going to be interesting is when stuff that is created in the metaverse starts influencing stuff in the real world where there's architecture that's like you know what we might be able to do if we had this new composite and now we finally have this way to you know fabricate steel this way we actually could start bringing in some of these metaverse buildings i keep going back to buildings i used to want to be architect we could start bringing that into the real world. Not all of them, not a tower made out of glass unless eh, maybe, maybe we'll get some crazy, yeah. strong, clear polymer. I don't know. Well, yeah. life imitating art. Like, like it's a thing that's definitely going to happen mm -hmm. from here. And it's like inception. I'm thinking of inception with the world folding over on itself. Like yeah. stuff like this could very well exist in this metaverse world. And it can be an NFT, which is sort of the unique thing about it. Like you, what you were sort of describing of what could become an NFT is essentially intellectual property stuff, like yeah. traditional intellectual property, anything that can have a copyright or patent. So a lot of, you know, your artists out there, or you creators, those sort of things can translate. If, if you can patent it or you can copyright it, it essentially can be an NFT. However, it's not limited to that. Like we know software can be, that that's IP. Like you can get a patent or a copyright depending on, on the usage and, and the form. So you can have software within a program which is sort of mind bending and most likely, and this is where I kind of want to segue a bit to work, the ability to work and create within a uh, metaverse world. You've mentioned that you can like do jobs and earn, you know, native tokens, but even outside of that, like to actually create something within this metaverse world that is intended to be exported out of meta the metaverse world and used in real life. I see some amazing applications. Coding is is one where I can see the metaverse becomes an immersive, like no code coding world that people come up with great ways to be able to create things and set up very visually, like you see in these movies where they sort of like mold things and like, yeah, I want that. And you sort of spin around and I want that. And it's a great way to be in your creation. And then, you know, you can step out and boom, then it's made by a 3D printer or it's uh, created by the the software to actually become an executable application. Yeah. And so that's something that's really interesting. What's your thoughts on that? I, I think that I, there's so many projects that, that I've seen that I, I, I could discuss and each one of them would just like, we could go down, like imagine a 3d painting, like they've had, they've used AR. So we're combining a couple of things now they've used AR, they have certain brushes. And I think this is actually a program that you can get through, um, like Oculus and stuff, but you can make a 3D painting that then someone in VR or AR can walk through and they have these different perspectives and you can have little things that are hidden and it looks different this way. And imagine it and taking it from just the, the, the two-dimensional 
flat canvas. And now it's actually a painting that you can be in and then turn that into an NFT or make that something that you can experience within the metaverse. There's, uh, you mentioned 3D printing. I can make those designs NFTs. I can make it so that once you earn this trophy or something, there's a limited amount that can be printed one time each. And now you have the right to make one printing you know, of, the, of this item. Um, you mentioned software programs being NFTs. There's a, a project called Game Starter. They're a cryptocurrency. They've got a cryptocurrency, but they their project is they're a, a launch pad for games that are NFTs. So you're able to invest in them and their games that are then NFTs. So then you have rights as a player to the game. Instead of me just buying a copy of Grand Theft Auto. I can be an early adopter into Grand Theft Auto. I get all my friends addicted to Grand Theft Auto. And then whatever upsells and ways for them to generate uh, money, which Rockstar is very effective at, um, I will be able to get a, a piece of that because not only am I a participant, maybe I don't even play the game, but now I know my kid's playing it. Oh, what are you playing? You can't, you're not leaving your room for that game. What is that? I'm going to buy a little bit of it. It's just you can go on and on with all of these these converging technologies in this new stuff that we, again, these young kids are going to be the ones who are going to be able to like, you know, blow your mind with what is, what's going to be possible because we're still, you know, trying to get a grip. Like some people are, I remember before the internet was something that people had in their houses. So imagine the perspectives we have versus the, the, the lack of limitations that someone who's always had an internet grew up at two years old, they're, they're thumbing around on, on an iPad it's it's going to be really exciting. It's going to be very very hard to keep up. Yeah, it, it definitely will be. This is going to grow really fast, and I think yeah. a lot of people have realized this is sort of that that next step in technology, especially in this sort of social interaction bit of technology. Uh, I think we all maybe demanded a little bit more than we would have if not for the pandemic. It, it probably yeah. escalated this this uh, adoption. And so, as we wrap up here, I just want to talk a little bit about. You know, some of the big players that, you know, may be coming out of this um, and maybe some other like alternative uses for it. So, you know, I'll get started. You've mentioned a bunch that are already in it. And then I sort of threw out a couple lists of, you know, some like glass companies that are interested in the glasses. I think that's a really good signal for who's interested in this space. So you have Facebook, you have um, Roblox, you have Earth 2, you have Decentraland. Those are kind of the big ones. Epic Games, I think, is really going to jump in here. The, the gaming aspect just makes too much sense. Their expertise in graphics. But you have a lot of component people, too, that may get involved here. So mm -hmm. like NVIDIA. NVIDIA is a, you know, a really important component of the processing and the, the graphics for a lot of what's required for these situations. So I, I think they're going to be really important. A lot of, more of these infrastructure, 5G. Um, you know, we'll get into like where all this stuff needs, but yeah, the 5G infrastructure, a lot of the cloud storage is going to be really important because of the processing and, and the amount of data that's just going to be required to like really have all these immersives. Like if GPUs doing a whole yeah. world, GPUs, TPUs, um, Magic Leap is a company down here in Florida who's like they're they're killing it. They're if you know anything about the mm -hmm. AR industry, they're a name that you know. If not, look them up. They're they're doing some really in, innovative stuff, innovative stuff, and they're pioneers in that. Um, but you're right. There there's more to just. There's so many, so many things, so many different industries. Like I said before, there are these converging technologies and these converging industries that, if you feel you mess, missed out on this, you number one you didn't. If you're listening to this, you, you're still very early because most people don't know what's going on, but there are so many other things that are going to be in need to be put in place. Like I can't just make a car. I need roads. I need gas stations. I need traffic lights and all those other things that have to be made. Probably not the best analogy, but there's the physical things that have to be created and all these other companies that are coming out, yeah. like you mentioned components and things like that. There's going to be... Um, it's softwares and there's going to be attorneys who specialize in this stuff. Like it's going to go so many different ways and the roots are going to spread. It, it's really going to be limited to our imaginations as, as cliche as that sounds. One quote I, I did want to say before we wrap up is Alan Tovel. I think he was a computer programmer or mathematician or something like that. Really smart guy. I love this quote. And this is what motivates me to constantly dig into these things that I'm not familiar with and try to, 
at least get a grasp. Even if I don't master it, I try to at least become familiar enough to A, have a conversation, but B, most importantly, see an opportunity or how it's maybe going to affect some other things. The illiterate man of the 21st century is not the man who cannot read or write. It's the man who cannot learn, unlearn, and relearn. So when you see a new social media platform, when TikTok came out and a lot of my friends are like, I'm not, I'm not doing that. That was my impression when, 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 when we went from Facebook to, to Instagram, I was like, I'm not doing Instagram. Like it's, I'm not doing it. Now my mindset is like, well, that's, that's the new thing. All right. Dove into TikTok. I saw that it was basically the, the crystal meth of social media. Um, it's extremely effective at captivating audiences and keeping you scrolling you can lose hours just flipping through and it is it gives you a lot of interesting perspectives even if i can't master tiktok and i don't have a big tiktok following i'm not doing dances or any of that other lip syncing or any of that jazz i see where it can go i'm more aware of what it is its differentiators and its potential and that's what uh that's really what we're also doing for you we're regurgitating you know this stuff for you guys through our conversations but well, you see what Z wants you to see is, is great with TikTok because you, you really yeah. get that curation from yeah. the, the Chinese overlord. So that's that's nice. It's really yeah. going to get a window into his psyche and, and you know yeah. what he feels is desirable for the American population. Yeah. CCP has the best interests for, for all of us. Yeah. You know, that it reminds me of, so you and I have been talking about the uh, the Dunning-Kruger effect a lot lately. And yes. just, just to put that out there, like we are aware that we are not experts in this and we're constantly reminding ourselves to make sure that we check ourselves, realize we're not experts, make sure that we're not putting ourselves out there to feel like, yeah, we know everything because we don't. We were very clear early on, we're learning out loud with this. And so this is us sharing some of the stuff we're sort of thinking about, kind of just putting our conversations that we have in private, usually out there in public. You want to explain the, the Dunning-Kruger effect for anybody who's not familiar? Yeah, yeah. So the Dunning-Kruger effect, in a nutshell, and you're going to have a much more specific definition and uh, an excellent originating example that it was based off of. But essentially, the, the Dunning-Kruger effect is the the natural tendency that just about every human has to get exposed to something pretty briefly, pretty shallow, and feel like you know a lot more about it. Now, it may not just be a knowledge. It, it may be that you feel like you are going to do really good on a test, even though you're like, you know nothing about it, but you think you're pretty confident you're going to get a 90%, even though you're probably going to get a 30%. And it's that disparity between what's actually your, your capability or what you would do versus what you think you will do. And it's, it's in all of us. The, the novice hubris, I think would be a good way to sum it up. And, and a, an example that I could uh, uh, lend would be, the fire, like going into the fire academy and you're just thinking firefighting, like how, how hard, like, how are they going to teach right. us? What are they going to teach us for months on end? Like how you could put water on fire. How hard is it? And you think you're going to be a badass and you think it's going to be easy. And you're like, how could, like, what's the textbook going to look like? This is water. This is fire. Put that on that, put the wet stuff on the hot stuff. No, there's, way more there's there's thermodynamics and building structures and all sorts of codes and chemicals and hazmat and all sorts of stuff but the person who you don't know enough to know what you don't know and, and that's that's what the uh, the dunning kruger effect is to me to in the, the story the unknown unknowns the, yeah. the unknown unknowns as uh, donald Rum, rumsfeld uh, so eloquently put um, I love that. That's such a good sound bite. I use that in one of my videos. Um, but the, the story that John mentioned where the Dunning Kruger, the kind of the, the example, the claim to fame Dunning and Kruger, I think is David Dunning. I forget Kruger's first name, but, uh, Billy, Billy, Billy Kruger. Sounds good. I don't know. Freddie, 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 yeah, Freddie. Yeah. So they, uh, there was this interesting situation where this gentleman, um, and I use that term loosely, be uh decided to rob a bank um he did not rob the bank with a mask two fact, banks. banks two banks oh you know the story better than i um so he robbed two banks was it i'm assuming it was the same day i'm hoping it was the same so, day i hope so too he he supposedly as as story goes he looked at the security cameras smiled at the security cameras very confidently no mask no disguise no wig no nothing 
got the money, walked out, and was promptly arrested at his home after the security cam footage was used to identify him by the authorities. Face. Yeah, it's pretty Because it was his face. It's, it's, it's a pretty good identifier. Um, almost as good as an NFT. Almost. When the authorities were showing him, guessing down at the precinct, he's denying that he's, he's done anything wrong. They're showing him the security camera footage. And he sees his face in the footage and he goes, but I wore, but I wore the juice. But I wore the juice. Which, which confused the detectives and officers there. He then described or explained that he, as, as a lad, learned that. that you could use lemon juice to kind of use invisible ink. <laughs> and with lemon juice and then using a candle, you could, you know, make a kind of little, uh, you know, first grade science experiment, invisible ink. Maybe not first grade because you're playing with candles. But in any case, this gentleman was under the impression that if you put lemon juice on your face, the cameras wouldn't be able to see your face. <laughs> so Dunning and Kruger decided, you know, we're going to put our names on, on your condition, sir. And uh, yeah, that's it. Yeah, I love that. So all that's to say, it's very easy to start to go down the rabbit hole, get the first couple surfaces of some of these things and feel like you know everything. And I, that's something very easy to fall into. And we want to make clear, we're <laughs> you're trying to make sure we're not falling in that hole. So if, if you think we are, check us, put in the comments, shoot us an email, uh, just, just let us know. Or maybe call in, you know, we'll, we'll do the call in show. Yeah, that'd be fun. And yeah. and and feel comfortable feeling uncomfortable and lacking confidence because that at least means that you're not uh drowning in novice hubris. Yeah. The but Dunning Kruger this, effect. At the same time, like this stuff is new and like nobody really knows what's going on. There there's some people really deep into this. It's a pretty small community, really tight knit, but really open to helping you learn and grow. So We'll we'll start to open some of the channels that we're exploring to hopefully invite you in some of these great communities, great conversations to get into because it is really a welcoming, welcoming group of people, mm -hmm. and it's they're exciting. really opening. It's it's exciting because you know it's like rising tides, right? Yeah. The the better this goes up, everyone succeeds. So with that, was there any last words you have? I know you gave a great quote, but any sort of cool takeaway? Um. Yeah, uh, Mark Zuckerberg, please don't unplug my life and, and cancel me. Uh, in the I, uh, I'm, a, I'm a big MZ fan. Like I said, we'll, we'll get into the my takes on Meta, but I uh, love the guy. I just love the guy. Long. Great, great guy. Such a like natural, charismatic, just really relatable human. Definitely a human. Being Def definitely a human. Definitely, definitely human. human. Yep. Uh, all right, you want to give our uh, our three claps? Yeah. We just do that to make ourselves feel better. My claps were for him. His were for me. Uh, like, subscribe, check out comments below, links, updates, maybe something that I haven't even thought of yet. We put down there since we've recorded this. And uh, go ahead and give us some claps. Participate at home. You guys, yeah, you, you click the clap button when you get a chance. Yep, get the clap. Get the clap. Thank yep. you so much for tuning in. I want to make sure you don't forget to check out the information and the links in the show notes. Some of that stuff is going to get you into freebies and raffles and contests and all sorts of other promotions. But also, we've got a private group dedicated to our listeners and our followers. We would love to see you there. Love to see you collaborate, join, and get exclusive content that we are only distributing through these other means. Speaking of distributing through other means, I want to make sure that you're also subscribed to our podcast, our YouTube channel, and again, join that private group so you know everything that we know as soon as we know it.